Uh-oh. Okay, everybody listen for their phones to ding here in about two seconds. Yeah. Oh, there went mine. And recording is now recording. All right. Who wants to start? We're wait or we're I don't think we amended the agenda for the pledge. And we can do that tomorrow when she uploads it. I can't remember if we did. All right. Oh, I have papers. I told you I was only half ready. All right. Councilman Curl. Here. Council President Shrimp. Here. Councilman Benedetti. Here. Councilman Wolf. Here. Councilman Brueger. Here. And Councilman McNamara. Present. Perfect. Do, do, do. So the next thing is a code enforcement officer's report. No, I know. I'm trying to pull it up. Oh, okay. I was trying to print it, but it didn't work. All right. Does anybody, do we, do, uh, I haven't seen it. It's pretty much uh, the same as it was the last <laughs> time. Um, as you guys are fully aware, we do not have a code enforcement officer at this time. Um, we do have a lot of uh, resumes that have been sent in. We have a lot of potential. Um, I'm going to start interviewing as soon as possible. And I expect to have the position filled rather quickly. We have some really good candidates. Um, and that's where I'm going to go with that. Now, I will tell you that I gave, um, I have been receiving complaints left and right. Eric has been given the high grass ones. Um, I have gone, I've had Brian go out and take a couple pictures. Um, I've actually taken a few pictures. Um, I know Eric's probably on mute, but Eric, I, I did send you a couple more today. Um, just the photos. Um, we used our rulers. We did everything that we were supposed to do. So he has a list. There's a falling fence on a different one. He also has um, possibly a home business, something along those lines. I gave him the information for all of that. So um, Eric is going to work on getting the letters to Becky tomorrow and have Becky print them out. Or I, I don't know if he, I, I think you're actually doing the letters and we're just mailing them or yeah. So I expect a list of letters to go out tomorrow because um, I don't want to sound, ex you know, there, there's quite a few high grasses and all of that. So we'll get those out um, and move forward because I have plenty of complaints. So um, code enforcement will have somebody in that position. I'll update you guys as soon as possible, but I expect it filled. Does council have any say in hiring of that or is that just all you? All me. Awesome. Not something I need to worry about then. How long did the last mm. guy last? He was here for a while. He was here. Um, does anybody in council remember? He was, I, I, I mean, year. I'd say eight months. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, no. I mean, it's not, I don't think a full year. Not. I'm pretty positive not a full year. Do they give a reason when they leave? Or is it basically they, they have us on the resume and then they go get a better right. job? Um. Very possible, most of them. All, I, all I'm going to say on this one is he left on good terms. There was no issues, no problems inside. Um, but he, you know, there was, there were reasons. Um, but I mean, as far as that goes, I'm not going to get into it, I don't think here. So, um, but it was all good terms. I guess I just, if anybody wants to ask me outside of there, I'm sure it's public record or something, Gene, you can tell me. But at this point, it, there was no issues, no problems. My only question on that is to get into the weeds on it. Just uh, doesn't it take about six months to even get past the learning curve? I mean, learning our codes is really, I mean, for the most part, I, I mean, our codes are high grass. The biggest things that we cite for is high grass and probably um, signage in some of the windows in our commercial, um, no semis. I mean, they're pretty basic. I mean, honestly, I'm not a fan of nitpicking. I know, you know, there are some people that want to be a little, um, more proactive, more, uh, strict. Um, but our code does allow for some people to live their lives. So uh, all I'm going to say is it's, it's a difficult job. I can definitely see that. Trust me, as soon as they get the letter, if they don't like what, the, what he has to say, the first thing they do is call me. So, 
Um, most people don't like it, but as far as this goes, I only have a few things that I'm particular on and high grass is one of them. Well, is there something we need to do to try and keep the next one around for a while? <laughs> I, I'm going to be honest. I think we pay very well in this position or fairly well in this position. Um, I, don't, I don't think, again, this person didn't leave because of anything that we did or anything along those lines. So this, you know, I, I don't think there was any, there's nothing that we could have done to kept this per to have kept this person. I think that's the nature of a part-time position. That's yeah. Difficult to keep people. I would agree. No benefits, high pay, um, but does the village of Minerva Park need a full-time code enforcement officer? It would be hard for them to find something to do all day. Um, there's only so many letters you can write and there's only so many times you can drive by the same house and see that if they, if they have the same high grass. I mean, he does four hours a day, five days a week is, we're not large enough. We're not the city of Columbus. So, I mean, without going crazy, I just, I don't know that there's a, there's anything he could do more than 20 hours. And in the winter time, it's even worse. I mean, cause you don't have the high grass, you don't have any of that. So I don't know how you would occupy the time and justify a full-time salary on that position at this point in time. Well, they do 20 change. hours. Do they get paid by the hour? Yes, that is an hourly position. No overtime. So, but no we benefits. don't want to have them start giving council classes on <laughs> teaching us what all these codes are. Huh? I know the code. Let's don't even don't even start there, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't trying to start. I was trying to understand. All right. So does anybody point. anybody have any questions on the code enforcement officer's <laughs> report or kind of report? All right. Let's move on to Chief Hoxtetter, EMS. Rick? You appear to be muted, sir. Oh. Hang on. I think you're muted. I'm going to try to unmute you. I think his microphone's just not working. Yeah, I don't think his mic is working. Well, you know what? I'm trying to call you. I have you on here. I don't know if they can hear you, though. Make sure they heard that. Anything else? Right. Nope. Happy to answer questions. Perfect. Did you guys all hear that or no? We had a I did, uh, medic okay. from Westerville. Um, we bar our medic was down, so we borrowed one from Westerville, but our medic is now back. Um, do you, what was wrong with it? Just uh, you told me, but it was just something basic, if I remember right. It was an electrical problem. It was an electrical problem, um, but it's fixed. The, the real problem was the car to charge the truck. Yeah. So the truck's fine. Yeah, truck's fine. Um, but everybody has his report. If anybody has any questions, let me know. I have him on the phone. I can ask him anything you want. Speak now or nothing. Um, any increase in corona um, symptom cases? Have we had any recent COVID-19 cases that you're aware of? Or cases for symptoms of? No. Okay. Not yet. Excellent. Excellent. Anybody else? All right. We will go on to the next one. Thank you, Rick. Okay. And then we have Chief Matt Delp. Okay. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Perfect. Yes. Awesome. Uh, basically, uh, I, you should have got copies of my reports. I did make a uh, modification to that instead of sending that. Um, uh, calls by geocode summary chart that uh, you guys normally got. I, I instead included a, um, um, a reports taken uh, report. So um, you should have seen that. I think we had uh, something like four or six reports. So um, again, activities down. Um, it's just uh, kind of a general thing of everybody being at home and, and, uh, trying to stay out of everybody else's way. Um, just a couple things. Uh, 
municipal court is moving toward dismissal of minor misdemeanor cases. And uh, that includes the ones that we sent down. So like those speeds and things on um, uh, Cleveland Avenue or maybe even Westerville Road um, that we send down to mini court or any mini court transfers or mayor's court transfers to mini court. Looks like uh, they've um, they're looking to perhaps dis um, just dismiss those. Um, so um, it's not written in stone. That's just something that they're talking about down in Muni Court, but I thought I'd make you aware of that. Because um, those, uh, those reports or those uh, tickets that we were filing that are getting um, going down there will probably be dismissed. And um, it looks like a lot of the surrounding courts are gonna be following a similar pattern. Um, the other thing, on that that topic, how do, is that just that we're not collecting? Do we collect any of the money that goes to Franklin County Court? Yes. Yes. And, and is that the problem is that now we're not going to be collecting any fees or fines from the the ones that are dismissed. That would be correct. Yes. It's it's not a lot. We don't send a ton <laughs> down there. We try to stay mainly in Mayor's Court. Uh, but when we get those um, really excessive speeds out there, those uh, 50, 55 mile per hour speeds on Cleveland Avenue, um, those are the ones we address because of the safety issue, um, trying to protect our residents pulling out from uh, our side roads onto Cleveland Avenue. Um, but it's, uh, and, and there's a percentage, it's not, when it comes to mayor's court, we get the, we get the lion's share of those fees, but uh, when it goes to mini court, we we get a smaller percentage. So, um, like I said, it's when you look at the report uh, for the citation summaries, if you see one of those four digit codes, um, those are ORC codes and those are the ones that were going down to um, Unicourt, uh, which I think was just one for the last month. So just that might make you aware of. Um, any other questions about that? No. Great. If they're going to automatically boot those, Chief, isn't there some way to give them a warning and try and collect locally? <laughs> Unfortunately, no, not for those. In that case, in that case, now's the time to be speeding. Making Don't the record. That. <laughs> That's the problem. That's what people are doing. Cleveland Avenue. Yeah, we're not, um, we're we're not incarcerating the barber this. shop over at uh, one hundred and sixty-one, are we? <laughs> so these are the uh, these are the these are the tickets that are down there now. These are not the tickets that are going from here forward. Um, these are the tickets that uh, they have their backlog on because you got to remember they shut down Muni Court um, back in March and it's now May. So um, they've got. This is just a COVID related change. Yes. All right. Yeah. It's just because of what's going on right there. Um, they're, they're looking at making changes to how they. Uh, um, run court they're gonna start setting up different courtrooms on alternating days so that they can uh try to maintain spaces and stuff like that so there's a lot of changes going on in the court right now good to see them taking good measures then yeah i think you're just trying to keep their staff and as and the people safe um and again it's just minor misdemeanors um so we're talking about speeding, parking, those types of things. Um, I do have, uh, I wanna give uh, some uh, props. Exxon um, is the uh, provider for our uh, tasers and our body cams is who we use. And they sent us a uh, package of uh, masks and also some uh, hand sanitizer. <laughs> So we, uh, we really appreciate them. They, uh, uh, there was no charge for that. That's just as being part of the Exxon family, they sent that out to us. And that's all I have, if there are no other questions. You know, I had something that's, I'm, it's, I'm sure probably isn't your responsibility, but it's a safety thing, is that coming up off of, uh, uh, old, uh, from Westerville Road up old, Dublin Granville Road. At the end of the road there, there was a sign, you know, a, a sign that points, you know, to the left there, uh, that's covered up by trees, you know, and someone's already now. The the reason it 
comes to mind is that someone's run into the guardrail there, you know, and I, that's like right on the edge. That's not in Minerva Park, but it's real close. Yeah, that is, um, that's either going to be the city of Columbus's responsibility or ODOT's. You, I can uh, I can maybe make some calls and see if I can get that no, taken like care. Like I said, it just it's kind of ironic that the thing the sign pointing that way you can't see it, and now someone has crashed through the guardrail. And it's the left arrow, right? Just something yeah. that says that. Yeah, it's the left arrow heading west what, on. What about any of the reflectors on the guardrail? Are they still visible? You know, I didn't really pay attention well there's a section of the guardrail that smashed i mean they're going to be out i guess they're going to be out there fixing the guardrail eventually but it's just a safety hazard that's why that's why i'm bringing it up now all right i'll uh i'll reach out to uh odot and see if that's theirs if not that's going to be city of columbus i can yeah i mean it's um, not in minerva park but it's right on the edge sure all right that's it All right, thank you. Anybody else? Okay, um, Mike's on here, but Mike is just listening. So, I because I did not tell him he needed to be here or anything. So um, I can always try to bring him in if I have any questions. But for the most part, Mike's answered a lot. He did do our streets meeting just a few days ago, um, actually about a week and a half ago. Um, Gene may hit a couple of these, um, but they have been working on quite a few things for us um, moving forward. Just the Yasmin market area, we got the information for Flowline to do that today. Um, I guess now might be a good time to do that. That's a part of legislation. Um, it's around $23,000. The quick version to that is those, when that was to be done, when we originally had them clean out the section, the CCTV, that was on the original plan. Mike had it all done. Um, we got a phone call that afternoon when they were down there to do it, and they told us that it was full of water, um, that they couldn't actually do it, and we all agreed to not have them do it because we knew it was going to be quite costly to do it, and we were hoping that we wouldn't have to do it, um, but at this point, long story short, has to be done. We all decided, um, myself, Gene, Eric, Mike Flickinger, that in order to really get the things done in this area that we need to do, we need this piece of information, so... Um, that's why it is so expensive, um, because they actually have to clean out the water in the line in order to be able to televise it. Um, if anybody in Mike, you are more than welcome to tell me to hush. And if you want to chime in anywhere, or if I say anything wrong, feel free. Um, so, and as far as the East Shore Court goes, again, we've just kind of, we have not stopped that project, in my opinion, at all. We are just trying to make sure that we can get this, the funds transferred. Um, Jean and Mike and Kim have been behind the scenes, nonstop emails. I, I feel like I wake up to 12 emails of them back and forth every single morning. Um, and no, I'm not complaining, um, but they have been going back and forth and back and forth just to make sure that this memo is exactly the way that it should be um, to get the funds transferred from the water line over. If Gene wants to hit that a little bit more in his, he's more than welcome to, but I feel like they finally have it where they want it to be to where we can actually get that money transferred. Um, because that's also going to be what we use for the Wildwood area, um, the Woodley, Wildwood, Jordan Road, all of that. Um, we have also been talking a little bit about over the last couple of weeks. I know, Tony, we kind of talked about this. I, I guess we could give this in Mike's report or Tony's report here in a little bit. But since I'm rambling on about it, we might as well talk about it. Um, moving forward on taking the risk of doing the rest of the sanitary sewer, um, the round 34 that has been postponed, um, the grant, I, I shouldn't say grant, the 0% interest loan has been kind of pulled from us right now. I'm using my words, not theirs, but basically it's been pulled right now due to all of um, everything going on. So we have, we do have the money to do it. Uh, we would prefer not to spend our money to do it, but keep our money, um, draw interest on it. Uh, however, uh, leaving people with bad sanitary sewers is not worth the interest in my opinion. Um, I know that we had talked to a couple people and I see Mark's already shaking his head because he was one of the first ones to say, let's keep moving on it. Um, we do have the potential of trying to 
Um, and again, this is where I'm probably not going to say this right, but still request the money back one if they do in fact award these that we could potentially do the project and then request the funds back. Um, it's a risk. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I want to make that clear, but there is still the potential of being able to request the funds um, as we move forward. So I, I'm, I, I guess if there's anybody that really has an issue with moving forward and writing the check for this, let me know within the next 24 hours because I, I know Mike's on here, but I think we really do wanna just go ahead and start getting that out to bid. Um, because right now we are, we are a couple months behind where we wanted to be, but I still think this is a project we could have done this year. Um, so anybody has anything with that, let us know. Other than that, we thank you, Mike. I know you're doing quite a bit of stuff behind the scenes for us, so we appreciate well, it. Of course, I'll have something. I always got something to add. You always have uh, something. I mean, I guess a part that I'm confused about is we're going from getting a loan to paying for it. <laughs> I mean, that's what um, is there any benefit to just getting a loan? Okay, so the loan is a zero percent interest loan, and well, they I'm, are current. Uh, huh? But we're going from we're going from funding this with a loan, yes. a zero percent loan. Yes. Which we're going to pay back slowly, just not as big a payment. But we're going from getting a loan for it to just paying for it right out of the bank. Correct. All right. I don't want to speak for anyone. I think his point might be, is there an intermediate? Is there a bank or agency that would give us a low, but not zero interest loan that we could apply for? Um, not to put words in your mouth, Tony, but that's well, what I, I think I it's, say. yeah, well, yeah, that's along the lines of what I'm thinking is that we, you know, we're, you know, got a lot of big ticket items that we're needing to pay for. Uh, and, you know, we, I keep hearing, well, we got enough money, we got enough money, but then, then we're talking about we're going to be if we if we do everything we're going to be pushing our rainy day fund, you know. So it's mm -hmm. that's what's confusing to me. Kim is on here and she's on mute. I think the only thing that I would say is if you're paying, let's just say two and a half, three and a half percent interest on it, it kind of wipes out your that that the amount from the finance meeting. Uh, Kim's, because uh, we talked about this when we first went for the loan, any, uh, the zero interest loan, it was, uh, the money was still there, parked there, that could be used for the sanitary sewers. The amount of interest for the year that we would get on money was $10,000. So if you have a two or 3%, well. 10, Kim's pardon? on here, does she want? 10,000, 10, right? That's what yes. I thought I said that, okay. So uh, 10,000, so if you had any kind of interest loan at all, you're gonna wipe, I mean, it's, it, it becomes a, we, the funds have been set aside, they've been set aside for over a year to, to pay for it. And uh, there's also money that's been set aside. I mean, Kim has set aside money for, uh, we have special sewer accounts that are, can only be used for sewers and all that. And so, uh, it's not like we could use the money that's been set aside for sewers for something else that's wrong. We have to use it on sewers anyway, sanitary sewer fund on sanitary sewer stuff. So the only thing is, is when we got the, the so she had that money set aside for sewers. Now, yeah, okay, the, yeah. only reason, the only reason she was even uh, coming up with this zero interest is because the administration at the time thought, hey, you know, we can, Ask the state of Ohio, whoever, for this money, and we can, you know, can just save our money and, and as we pay off the loan. But uh, that was that was just a hap that was a circumstance, and, and it's not a requirement. I guess that's the, where we're at. All right. <laughs> well, hey, Tony. Oh, we got Mike. <laughs> Yeah, this is Mike. I, I think what we what we have to realize right now is the funding for this round, the funding for round 34, it's currently just technically on hold. And the reason it's on hold is because it's, the funding is coming out of the state budget and the state budget hasn't been passed yet. So they're not saying that it will be included in the state budget when it's passed. They're not saying that it won't be included in the state budget when it's passed. 
They're just saying right now they can't award any of the projects on July 1st like they normally would. So they are, the OPWC has said um, people who, people who uh, would have received an, an agreement would have received a project are free to proceed at their own risk if they are interested. And then when the budget gets passed and they enter into an agreement with the community, you can then submit the whole thing for reimbursement, similar to how you would just have submitted it each month with the contract is paid. So that, that's just where it stands right now. It's not that the money isn't guaranteed to not be there. It's just right now it's on hold. Well, if you put it like that, I think the chances of, of the state having the money to do this when this, all this stuff is over with is unlikely. Well, yeah, you never know what they're gonna. Yeah. You know, I mean, that doesn't. The budgets don't necessarily make sense in terms of. There's a lot of politics involved in a budget, as you know. So, but well, anyway, it still still won't be there. Budget has to be. Their budget year starts July one, so you know it's not going to be before then. And the meanwhile, you know, we could get this thing out to bid and get the thing going. And if we wait until after, whenever after July one. Uh, you know, that well, that makes it more difficult. Well, to get the it other part that I didn't understand was that we've got the money. You know, I kept thinking yeah. that we're borrowing the money and no, we don't have it. Yeah. So, yeah, if any, so I guess we're back to the same. If anybody does have any issues, um, I know Mike's on here right now. So, I mean, I personally would just, I mean, I'm, I'm back to the move forward, get it done. We're going to have to write a check for it anyways, or we're going to be repairing things that are even worse. So, um, we were fortunate that the last time it came in much lower than we thought it was going to. So fingers crossed that this comes in lower again than, than we're expecting. You never know. Let's um, do it. Yeah. So Mike, I think you're on here. So I think we're all in agreement that we want to get this ready to go out to bid or whatever our next steps are. I know you know what the next steps are. Yeah. So I, I think um, I sent something to Kim and you uh, late in the, in the day. We're in a position right now that we can, we can, advertise we can get you the advertisement on probably may, uh, may 22nd you could advertise in the um, daily quarter or reporter i can't remember which it's called um, may 28th june 4th and june 11th okay. and then open bid uh june june 19th perfect so we can turn that around for a, a mid-june bid sounds like that that's the plan Sounds like a plan. Okay. All right. Next. <laughs> All right. Thank All right. you, Mike. Um, fiscal officer. So Leah and Kim are both on here, and I don't know if Kim has anything that she wants to say or Leah if they want to say. Um, I just kind of took everything from Tony for his committee, and I think if, it, if I let the fiscal talk, we're going to do the same. Um, I know, Kim, do you have anything you want to say? Anybody have anything they want to say? I'm going to... Oh, Nothing there's... that you haven't already covered. Okay. I think Thank we're fine to move forward with that project. Yes. And then we're going to pass the, hopefully, we're going to pass the request estimated revenues, the 4.0 mil levy. Um, they will actually start working on that tomorrow, assuming we get that passed today. Um, they are working on transferring funds. I know they, they're doing pay, um, Leah's going to be doing payroll tomorrow. Uh, she was in there pretty late the other night doing paying bills. Um, so that has been, so far it's all been going well. Leah has her section of things that she's doing. She's, I think a little, um, she's had quite a bit going on with mayor's court as chief had mentioned mm -hmm. earlier. Mayor's court's been a little crazy. We um, met to, this is not really fiscal, but um, with Yaz at um, Jean's office to set up protocols for the June 3rd um mayor's court so trying to make sure that we don't have enough too many people in there so they all have their hands full um as far as kim leah and becky right now trying to make sure that we have everything ready to go for when we open back up so um uh, does anybody have any questions for kim or leah or anything awesome and gene yeah and just fantastic job by kim uh, Mike, the mayor, 
everybody and pulling the documents together for that fund transfer. I think it should go fairly or should go very smoothly. I don't know if they've ever received such good supporting documentation for a fund transfer down at the tax commissioner's office. Um, and my guess is in this, they may be getting a number of these because people um, may have excess funds in one utility and with the pandemic, folks are gonna be in a lot more trouble than the villages. We had to sort of set out that that's not what we're here to do. We really got specific stormwater, well studied stormwater um, projects we would like to um, move forward with not general operational type of um, costs or expenses um, that, uh, you know, our, our income tax, for instance, may not be up uh, as it usually is. That's what other folks are facing. So anyway, kudos to everyone involved. Um, and we are, yes, we are uh, drilling down on what we believe to be the private line issue that is uh, leading to a number of problems, including Yasmin Market, <coughs> including the Jordan Road issues. Um, it is a private line, but even uh, we had to make a judgment call, even if we have to, in essence, use enforcement tools to get the private line owners to address what is not a public line issue. We may have to do the investigation to have the background to force them to go after it. So um, we think we know where the issue is. It's going to take Plo line getting in there providing the video and then we can show it to both the landowners involved and, and frankly uh, put them in a position. Uh, those two have to figure it out. There's some documents between the two of them as to who's responsible. We keep telling them one thing's clear, village isn't responsible, but it, you guys have to clear that up. So we're trying to get the, the background we need to go after and get that project finally moving. And again, um, I know Tiffany mentions us a lot, but she's been pushing these projects and getting some stuff done. So kudos back to Tiffany. But unless you guys have any questions about uh, all I've got to uh, add on to everything that was discussed on Saturday. Uh, with regards to the, the Yasmin market line there, it's the line that we're uh, televising is that the line that will provide the information to verify that this is not our problem? Yeah, it should, Tony. We think it eventually um, pours into that old uh, WPA line, which we still don't think is ours, but uh, you know, heck, we don't even know where it runs, it's so old, <clears throat> but. Even before, we don't think that WPA lines where the problem is. It's before the WPA line, and that would definitely be a private line. Is who is it that's made the determinations about which lines? Because you know, I was talking with Mike, and he's not really involved in this. Who is? No, Mike. Mike's uh, uh, been you know copied on all the and, and involved in the discussions. It's, it's what, yeah, 54, 54, 54 Cleveland private line, which uh, we're still, frankly, you know, we, we've we had um, some thought as to where the blockage is, um, but we're gonna have to get in a televised to see exactly where, where it goes and where it may be blocked. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, Tony, I wasn't involved for a while, but Going back to the street committee meeting, I'm, I'm the one that put together the scope of work, and I'm the one that sent the scope of work with Flowland. Well, there's like two different lines that we're talking about here that go to nowhere. There's the line that, that yeah. comes out of Yasmin Market's parking lot, their back corner one, and then there's another line that, you know, goes down from the 5454 heading east. You know, so we're only televising one line, but there's two different lines I think we're in question. 
They're, they're televising that main trunk that basically runs from Cleveland Avenue to the east and just sort of terminate. Right. And then they're also going to look at that little, they're going to look at that little overflow pipe that someone put in that last drainage structure. The one so that what they're actually televising is the, is the main trunk. The one that goes off into someone's backyard? That's yeah, they're going to they're going to take a look at it and see just what's going on with that. But the main televising is in that trunk too. Right, right. Okay, so they're they're looking at both of those lines. Yep. All right. That's it. All right. Any more legal questions? Um, I just wanted to also comment on the document for. Um, uh, for transferring the funds, I was also very impressed with that document. I just thought it was so thorough and so thorough and detailed. And it's a wonderful document to have anyway for the village. Um, I think it's a great, it'll be a great historical document to have as well. So um, everybody involved, I just was really impressed with it. Thank you. Thank you. You guys got to email me this. I got to see. <laughs> I got to see. Well, what... it, We're making it, everybody... it sound way more exciting than it actually yeah. is. But... No, it's very nice. It's a very great document. Great. It document. is. It was, it's very well written. There's a lot of detail. It's a lot of, a lot. they put a lot of work into it. We'll say yeah. it that way. You can tell it, it wasn't something I did in five minutes before the meeting. You can, you can definitely tell. Yes. Well, and that was the one that we were just sent recently, correct? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, that, that did look very, very thorough, very comprehensive. So kudos to the legal team or whoever the writers were. Oh, it was Mike. I can't mm -hmm. take credit. <laughs> it looked like Mike, I have to say. Yeah. A very detailed guy. My kind of guy. Very detailed. <laughs> that's why we love people like that, because I'm. Uh, that's not me either. So yeah. OK. Anybody else for Gene? All right, Tony, planning and zoning. Planning and zoning. Well, uh, we had a meeting Wednesday night, this past Wednesday, and the main topic, I think the only topic, was uh, the approval of the, the building plan for the new school in the development. Uh, I don't know, you know how much detail I need to go into about that, but it looks beautiful to me. Looks like it's going to be a lovely school. And again, I don't know what else, you know, what else there is to add. Hopefully, you, maybe we had talked about having a, uh, you know, some kind of a, uh, in the, something in the newsletter to announce that this has taken place and that, you know, from what I understand, they're planning on starting this summer. Tiffany, did you say that there, that uh, our the website will have all the pictures and all that posted. It's all right. It's been on there. It's been on there for. It's on the front page of the website. Um, Eric might be able to tell you exactly when the documents were delivered, but the documents were delivered. Becky uploaded them all to the website. Um, I know that we got the traffic study last Wednesday. It was uploaded the very next day. It was uploaded on Thursday. Um, but I would say, I mean, it, again, it's not been a super long process. I would say it's only been on the website for about three weeks, which, and again, Eric, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but, um, it is on the website. It's on the, you know, it, it's, it's right there. It's right on the front. It's been there. Um, I see it now. I, I didn't scroll down far enough. That's what somebody else told me today when I got a little flack. <laughs> Um, and yeah, I, there are people that are that don't feel that there was enough information about it. They they've been aware of the fact that there is a school coming. Um, I think we've already talked about it a little bit. So yeah. again, it would have just been nice for us to be able to have um, the extra couple weeks that we thought we were going to have, and we don't, and it's done, and it's moving on. And if anybody has any questions, problems, concerns feel free to reach out um, and let us know. Unfortunately, during the pandemic, there's really not a town hall that we can do. We've not been able to do one for two months. Um, that was in the very first conversation Eric and I had with um, Westerville schools, whether or not there would be anything like that done. Um, really, there's not been any discussion since then because we can't. Um, I think trying to have a Zoom with a neighborhood is probably not going to work out either. So I don't, if anybody had any, has any ideas, I mean, again, they're not breaking ground. They're not doing anything yet. If anybody has any problems or concerns, let me know. Um, Westerville has been more than accommodating for anything that we've asked them to do. Um, if people have questions, they're more than welcome to reach out to Westerville schools. Um, 
the designs, I actually did post something on the village website uh, that just has the designs and a couple of things on there as well. Um, because again, yes, I, I, and Joe, I think you had even told me that you had somebody that was disappointed and, you know, they were disappointed that council hadn't said too much. And, and yes, I've gotten a couple of calls. There was a Facebook posting on Saturday, um, that it kind of went and they weren't expecting, they were expecting more information to come from us. Simple as that. Um, but again, if anybody has any problems, questions, concerns, uh, Westerville, again, they've been more than accommodating. So if there's something that, you know, they have questions about, forward them to me and I'd be more than happy to ask them. I can give them to Eric. Eric can follow up. Um, well, but yes, it's on the know, website. Now's the, now's the time to start explaining to people that, you know, if you have concerns about the schools that are going to be built in the community, that, uh, you know, now's the time to start talking about those concerns when it comes to the next school that they're going to build uh, or even the remodel of the of Hawthorne or whatever comes up first because you know our only uh, you know way of monitoring or having any influence on what's going to be done in the schools is through zon zoning uh, regulations and you know this isn't this is something new for Minerva Park and that we've got schools being built here and if there are residents that have uh, things that they'd like to see in the next school, now is the time to start talking about uh, what those things are, what your concerns are, and then we can start to address those in the next school because this last approval process was really just to make sure that the exterior of the school uh, met our zoning requirements. And we really don't have any zoning requirements that cover schools. So it's almost, you know, it's, I wouldn't say a useless exercise, but we didn't have much to, to go to the school system and say, you know, we'd like to see this, that, and the other thing, because we don't have anything in our codes that require them to do anything. To those people who have concerns, that's, that's what I have to say to them. The only thing, and Eric, you can point out anything as well, because I know you were part of it and you're getting, or you can hit it in your next one. Um, yeah, he's up next. They have been involved. Mike Flickinger has been working on the um, the drainage I'm, uh, storm. I don't know if it's, I'm, I don't know if it's just a storm water or whatever, but they have been working on that for quite a while. Um, they have been going over the plans and making sure that they have everything. I mean, we've done our, we've done everything that we should be doing um mike has been involved eric's been involved so i mean as far as the plans go it wasn't you know we weren't just we do have a little bit and we do have mike working on making sure that we don't this doesn't cause us more draining problems so and i know that there were some issues that they've had to relocate certain things so now i'm kind of i, well, I wouldn't I know how to explain one, it but eric thing, does <laughs> the thing that we found was a potential drainage problem mm -hmm. and that was addressed yes so again, they've been more than more than um, willing to work with us more than I mean, again, like Tony said, there's not much that we can tell them to do. Um, but they have they've been accommodating on the little suggestions that we have done. Um, and just like am I, I'm sure that, you know, as time goes on, if there's certain things that we don't like, they will we can address it, I, not I, that there's a building. I would say that the one thing we may have a shot at having any influence in is the colors. No <laughs> yellow. Well, there's just like two options in the colors that are, that they're thinking about doing. I don't know that, I guess that's the one thing that hasn't really been firmed up yet. So as long maybe as it's not yellow, I don't get, care. Get a poll on Facebook and see, I don't know. <laughs> All right, Tony, do you have anything else for planning and zoning? Uh, no. All right, Eric. Thank you. Um, yeah, just to add on to the um, Westerville discussion there. So, Tony's absolutely correct in stating that when they did the original plan district, the residential plan district, which am I, uh, you know, built all of its houses in, they intended, uh, and Gene was a part of that process uh, a few years back before I started, but they intended always to put a school into that reserve area. And so it was, it was written in there for the public to understand uh, simply that, you know, there were not a lot of restrictions um, aside from, you know, your standard setbacks and, you know, other items related to the building itself. And so it never reached a major modification of text or site planning that would have put it to council. So 
that's the reason after the PNZ had saw it for two times, it got approved and PNZ's wording, you know, that their directive in the code is simply thou shall approve, you know, there's some other major issue or appeal it has to go to council and there was none of that. Um, the yeah and also it is a good time perhaps to think about the future schools the middle school will be the other major construction project uh further on farview and at such time uh as mike's firm recommended as part of the review of the traffic they'll need to submit a, a new traffic study to you know further address uh, any of the school system traffic increases at that time so there may be some other improvements that are required as we go through that future process uh within a couple of year time frame uh finally the school um, system said they would be more than happy to come in to do a presentation for council uh, so the public could see sometime in June or whenever you'd like them to come uh, present. So let me know and I'll be happy to arrange that. On that very note, it might be a good idea to get something in the newsletter so that people are aware of it. Yeah, that was the discussion. I sent out an email to let everybody know that I wanted to make sure that the you have until Tuesday or Wednesday of next week to get anything you want into the newsletter because we do want to do a blurb. The blurb's just going to be a little different than what I had before. There seems to be a lot of interest in that. Mm -hmm. The yeah. comments I had, I I did ask everybody making a comment. I said, do you have children that are going to attend a school? Or they went, no. I went, well, okay. <laughs> just concerns. Right. <laughs> All right, and so now's my report. I've already talked enough. Um, I have very little. So as you guys know, we are going to be interviewing for code enforcement officer and the administrative assistant. Same thing, I have tons of applicants for that as well. Um, and we hope to get that filled as soon as possible. The swimming pool, um, I will be out there tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning to let them in um, to look at the warranty work. Uh, which is the walls, the painting, all of that. So um, I've had Tony, Tony emptied 99% of it. I sent Brian back over there today to finish emptying out the little bit that has come in the last two days. Um, so they will be out tomorrow. I'll let you know how that goes um, with the warranty work. So I don't, they're not actually doing the work tomorrow. They're just coming out to look at it to see what we need to do, I believe. Um, and then we've talked about this a little bit, just, you know, we're making plans to get our building back open right now. We are there from 10 to two. Um, number one, I'm there every single day. So obviously chief is there every single day. So people that are coming to the door, we do, we do try to come to the door. We don't let them in, um, but we do talk to people through the door. Um, we do have Leah and Becky there from 10 to two on Tuesdays and Thursdays, just to kind of make sure that they're, um, answering the door at that point as well. By the first week of June, we anticipate having them back in there full time. Um, obviously that can still change, but that is the goal. Uh, other than that, I'm sure we have plenty of other stuff to talk about. So I'm done. So next we have- it was a, You did kind of skip over the MPCA, but- Oh, I, I did. They, I don't think they've had any the meetings. Meeting. They've canceled yeah. everything. Everything's canceled and we're moving on to 2021. Yeah, there you go. All right, that's it. For no, you. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, I do think the garage sale is still on for September, but other than that, no, I, I don't believe they're really even doing Zoom meetings or anything. I've not heard. Not, um, um, and I see Mark right there. So let me ask Mark. Mark, anything? They're, they're not. Um, I know they are still really hoping that the pool opens up and they can do no, wine and cheese yeah. and all that, but <laughs> they're just waiting to see. And at this point, obviously, we still haven't heard, you know, I think Dwine was supposed to make an announcement today for some stuff and he did not. So, um, I mean, at, at the easy way to say it is pools are still closed. Um, we will have to make some decisions if we are, in fact, able to open the pool late May, early June um, with all of the other pools closing. Um, Gene, this might be something for you to start thinking about. With all of the other pools closing, obviously, there's a concern that we would have an uptick in people trying to come to ours in the event that we don't have to close um, because a lot of them have already made the call. So, um, you know, whether or not that means only, and this is, this was the thing that I had talked to Eric about earlier today. Um, we know that it is, we know that we've gotten a grant. It is a public pool period. We already know that, but Gene, is there something if we have to limit, and I know we're going too far in this, but if we had to limit the amount of people in there per day, could we limit it to members only? Because yeah, we allow residents no, and non-residents. Yeah, I think my question. That. 
as long as we don't limit the memberships to just, you know, correct or something. But no, they're they're gonna have like you say, they they still kept public pools closed. They're gonna have to come up with guidelines before they're ever gonna let us reopen those. We don't know what those guidelines correct. may be. And and as you pointed out, if if we do reopen, it may be I haven't heard officially anything about either the public or the JC Westerville pools. If, but if they're not going to reopen it, you know, it, it, it's it's going to be a onslaught of people. We'll be the only ones around. So just something to think about. I mean, yeah. And I just wanted to make sure if we did limit it to memberships only, and yes, we would allow outside. That was just something we, we I wasn't a hundred percent for sure. Um, but anyways, I think that's, we're all being really, really, really hopeful that it happens. Um, but I, you know, I, I don't, I'm not even going to say anything negative. We're just hopeful that it happens. Um, I looked into this cursorily and there's no known transmission that I can find of, of COVID through water supply. So it would all have to do with distancing, which would mean somebody would have to be you know, if people were in the pool, separating them, I suppose, or making sure they don't swim too close to each other. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I don't, uh, yeah, I have no idea. But Gene can answer that. I think they've suspended most of the normal rules and that's permitted to uh, apply distancing. In other words, yeah. you could have the pool, if the pool was open, you'd have to limit the, the number of people coming in. Right, because people tend to exhale when they come back out. They, they don't know, you know, how far that travels. And uh, I, I, I told somebody maybe drinking the chlorine water, you know. I'm, That's what I'm thinking, just a little more chlorine. Yeah, a little chlorine that might actually cure things, you know. You guys are going to get trouble for saying that. I'm just I know it. it. I know <laughs> it. But don't think that we haven't all thought it. Tony's thought it, too. So, there's no we, there's no known transmission of covid through food supplies either that yeah, i can find it, it would you're right it would be just the even walking around the pool or the the uh, common areas things like that i'm sure they'll come up with guidelines of some sort before they let them reopen well, oh yeah the thing that aggravates me is i saw on the news today an uh, airplane you know they're still packing people into airplanes <laughs> like that. sardines you know, but you can't go. I mean, it's getting a little frustrating. Yeah, yeah it's like it, it was a United could not flight. Be flying right now, it's that simple. Together like that, or really mm -hmm. probably at all. Mm -hmm. I'll let you know how how it works when I fly. Okay. All right. All right. So, David McNamara, community. Um, yes, Madam Mayor, members of the council and community. Um, it is my pleasure to announce that we are beginning to get moving again on the lakes project. We have a walk around the lakes with a state forester tentatively scheduled for 9.30 a.m. on May 26th, so that is a Tuesday. Um, provided that distancing guidelines are followed, it, it will be open for people interested to attend. And the purpose of this meeting will be to um, have the state forester out to see what our shorelines look like and provide guidance on um, future, future management um, for the restored lakes. Um, through the consent of the council and my committee, I have been also in touch with the park systems of Delaware and Franklin County for information and guidance on the shoreline plantings and um, I have not yet received word back but I sent those emails fairly recently so I'll give that a little bit more time. Um, I sent a blurb out to the mayor as well as um, the individual who writes our um, newsletter about the goings on and I assume there hasn't been any issues with that. I know you saw it Madam Mayor. Um, so yeah, to clarify with the pool, that was one of our concerns as well. And just to reiterate, we are at this point following the guidelines of the Ohio Department of Health, which as of yet has not ruled on pools, but um, like our mayor said, we are hopeful that we'll at least get some sort of 
season this year. Um, besides that, there was also to be included in the newsletter a lake cleanup on a Saturday morning from nine ish to noon ish. Um, and that will be out in the newsletter. I forget the exact date off the top of my head. I know I have it. June 13th, 8 a.m. Yeah, yeah, 9 a.m. the 13th. 8 a.m. 8 a.m. We move. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, 8 to noon. No, that's fine then. Um, yeah. So those are the main things we're working on. We're trying to trying to safely get community activities for our beautiful little village reestablished. That's um about all I have at the moment. And we'll, if we have any questions, we'll be happy to answer them. Did I have a question. That uh the mayor, did you send that email from Lisa about from the friends of the Allen Creek tributaries? I, I said I, I was gonna send it. You said you were and, oh I did. Okay, I just want to make sure the that, that uh David yes. had that because there were some things in that uh that report that I think the I'd like to hear get a second opinion on, I guess. Okay. Um let me look at my email right now. I'm quite confident that I have it. I would have um, said Saturday. Yeah, on the okay. subject of the lake cleanup, do we have access to any anything that floats if we need to get out in the water to do any of it? We got paddle boats at the pool. <laughs> you know, if, you want, if that's what you're um, about. The only thing that I would say I, that we'll refer to Gene here a little bit on that, um, whether or not we would allow anybody to use them. I, I know that we're lacking some um, life jackets. We have a couple. I, I think we have one or two. Actually, one of them still in my car. Um, so I don't know that that was if that's even a possibility. If they would need to sign a waiver, I know they've signed waivers before for chainsaws and things like that. Um, I don't know for sure that it's been established exactly what the plan is and what people are going to do. So, you know, once David um, or, you know, the, the, that committee decides exactly what they want to do, um, that's stuff that we can refer to Gene, whether or not it's a smart idea, not a good idea to let people in paddle boats. Yes, we have them. Um, we actually have four, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, you know, one of the residents here on North Lake had a flat bottom aluminum boat that was always came in handy for years, but they sold it. <laughs> right. So. Well, that yeah, does I, a whole heck of a lot of good. Same thing. I, it's just whether or not it's worth it. I mean, is it worth having people go out there and do all that? If, if Tony ends up lowering it, uh, the lake a little bit, like they've discussed, um, I don't know that you're even going to get a boat because most of the sections aren't yeah, even deep I, enough I'd as like is. I think we'll have plenty of other things to do yeah. besides getting in. Exactly. Um, well, I, was, I was just going to venture out there myself. And but clean Joe, I'll get one and put one out back back of your house there joe we need to get those darn paddle boats out of the pool anyway so uh, we brought one yeah backyard we brought one over the community building so well i wasn't going to need volunteers i was just going to venture out there when the boat was there because it's not that much i do have a long pole with a net on it <laughs> that might, we, we, Mayor, we yeah so the, the way you bring that over then joe so he's got something to do you can go out and get that darn burger king wrapper <laughs> Well, there's more than one, but the stuff comes down the storm sewer is where how it gets in there. A lot of it, a lot of plastic water bottles. And oh yeah, they clean them out constantly on both sides. So, so, so the way I you. see this going is um, similar to the Ottawa River Coalition's cleanups of Allen County, whereas people are, you know, we meet at a central location, and then people all go out to different locations with a bag. The bags are placed at known locations when cleaned, and then they will all be collected at the end of the day, and people can return for their, you know, donuts, coffee, whatever we choose to have. And the focus will, of course, be on the main lakes, but if we have enough volunteers, we can also dispatch a group or two to the MI properties and see about those retention ponds. Um, the, the Ottawa River Coalition, um, which I've, I've personally been a part of numerous cleanups of theirs, um, they've got that about darn near down to a science. So it's, that seems to be a pretty good uh, methodology. Unless well, David, there are some objections in the community. The other thing that's come up on the lakes, residents are complaining, although it, got, it suddenly got cold, it's snowing in May, so, but there was algae starting to grow at the north end of North Lake again. So uh, somebody was carrying on with me about that. But 
aqueduct when they treat they used to come up to North Lake and then they would throw some, you can't really get in there. So they would come and they would throw stuff off the shoreline when they treated the other part of the lake. And I think that's part of what we pay them to do. So apparently they haven't done that. Yeah, I, I can't, I cannot claim familiarity with Aqueduct's protocols except for the um, aerators that we fixed. I, I, this is, you know, obviously my first summer with you guys, but if that's part of their program, then, you know, we should, we should expect it to be carried out because it's what we're paying them for. Um, yeah, it's well, the problem is it's hard to get access on the north end of North Lake because they put a boat in down off Minerva Lake Road. And then okay, so, they can only get so far up the lake. So then they, if they kind of gloss over it, then they don't get the, you know, their treatment in. Well, I think that's a, that's a discussion that we can, you know, that's a discussion I'd be happy to have with you know the relevant parties but as a community update as a whole i think that's what um okay just so you guys are aware on may 7th um today was our next scheduled visit for this season today we treated minor algae growth and picked up minor trash ponds are looking healthy we'll return in two weeks to continue treatments let me know if you would like to put together a quote for the fountain for a fountain a larger fountain in the middle of the larger pond would really set it off have a great week so Somebody they were out there on May 7th and treated for minor algae. Somebody just needs to give them a footnote to not forget to do their north part of North Lake thing again, because that's, that's always been included. Sometimes they need a nudge. Okay. Paul Miller is a man that got, you know, was mad about it. Of course, he lets me know. All right. All right. Okay. So next, um, Diane, you're on mute. All right, uh, we uh, recently had our uh, first finance meeting. Um, since Kim has, uh, Kim and um, Leah had a chance to work together and uh, Kim um, brought us up to date with Thank all you. of our financial information and uh, got us up to date on our monthly, our I'm month looking. end, <laughs> our month end closings and such. So um, it was a really good meeting. I really appreciated the, the level of detail, the information. Um, we talked about the, uh, I know Tony mentioned the rainy day fund, which is always uh, what is the current policy is, is two months worth of uh, expenses. The equivalent of two months worth of expenses is, is the gauge for the rainy day fund set aside. So um, we talked about having the, the um, 20, for 2020, having uh, money set aside for Wildwood project in 2021 for East Shore. Um, of course, we've already talked about the Yasmin market um, that came up. Um, as far as uh, we did talk about the levy, which we, which is part of the legislation that's uh, uh, going to be read today. And um, talked about the fact that they're going to put the golf cart probably on GovDeal's listing to see if... Um, uh, they can um, get anything for it. Someone will take it for some cost. Um, and, we're we talking talking about, golf cart. and we talked about the uh, overall uh, status um, and uh, if there's any way that, because the city of Columbus has already cut their budget for the next two months, then course there's uh, money that comes from it's a little little bit of money that comes from the state and the Franklin County etc but um, Kim felt overall at this time that there was uh, there's there's not uh, a significant anything they could kind of take away from us they've already kind of done that over the years so uh, in terms of um, funding they give us we are waiting to see if the audit waiver is going to be approved um, uh, Kim is waiting for a response uh, so that uh, if not, uh, we would have to do a full audit, audit uh, which is normally required when you change fiscal officers. But since she wasn't gone that long, only a, really a month, technically with training included, 
Um, you you project you yes, you may. Uh, I'm sorry, we did, we did find out we got approval for that. Oh, great. So the waiver has been approved and we're good yes. to go. Yes, we are good. Wonderful. We're selling a golf cart. How much is it, Diane? <laughs> we're not selling the golf cart. We're putting it on uh, Gov Deals. Uh, it's a Gov Deals uh, website to see if anybody would even care about it. Um, <laughs> we'll care yeah, about we, it. We may end up money. having to pay somebody 20 bucks to take that thing off our hands. Well, I think in, in that if you gave it to somebody, I'm sure a resident would come by and take it, but that's not the point. So um, well, if it comes it, so, to that, I'm sure that somebody would take it. So you're selling it the, the best offer is what I hear. Well, it's certainly not worth anything. It's scrap metal. <laughs> yeah, just scrap perhaps. Okay. Is it operable? Uh, it's not running right now. That's why we got a replacement vehicle. The drive mechanism, the thing that engages the the motor to the, it doesn't have a transmission. I don't know. I've never seen how a golf cart works, but it's a thing that engages the wheels. <laughs> it's like a transmission. Oh. It's done. It's not, it's not engaging. Yeah, the OTR. Usually it's batteries, and the batteries are big bunny to, you know, replace them. But I saw what. We okay, do. We so, have a new one. I, I saw somebody driving one down the street, so I'm asking. I went, wait. I, well, I we, we Joe, if you came uh, to I, some of the meetings, Joe, you'd find out that we bought a yeah, a, a UTV. Well, I remembered that part, and that's what I presumed it was. Well, that's what it is. Is uh, since you're on, Kim, is there anything else you want to add about finance? Hello? I guess not. She just no, she up? just left. She just went back to up. another meeting. All right. All right, very good. Then I'm done. All right. And we have Joe Curl Communications. Um, communications. Um, we have a meeting coming up. I'm still working on hopefully having somebody from the infrastructure committee in the Congress give us a little spiel about what may be coming down in terms of uh, what they're going to do, which would come down through the state then, because all the states are demanding lots of federal money all of a sudden, you know, to restore their budgets. So I was, you know, it would be just basically a little pep talk, but it'd be interesting to find out. Then the other thing, we don't have a, a health board in Minerva Park and uh, things along those lines. So I was trying to get my hands on through the uh, Franklin County, a resource guide that would particularly relate to services that people in the community might need in terms of elder league on lockdowns and, you know, along those lines. And uh, so, uh, but they're all closed. I can't get anybody, uh, although I got a meeting with the Dean of the social work department down at Ohio State. I think they're gonna fix us up with some guides. I'll, Make sure you have them, Tiffany, if I can get them. Do you have anything on the communications committee? That's what I just mentioned. Oh. Okay. Um, the meeting is the 13th, if I'm not Tony, mistaken. Why, Tony, why do you get a bad attitude like this all the time? I'm getting fed up with it. I'm sorry. You make co snide comments, and that's against the rules of conduct for the council. Yeah, well, and that's the third you. one tonight. So, would you cut I'm, it out, please? I'm sorry. Okay. Dude, you're right. Okay. okay. So, I, I, it's after eight o'clock, and I know that there's a lot of people on here that's been at work since early this morning. So, um, let's get back on target. So, communications, they have a meeting on the 13th. I believe it's at 7 p.m. It is at 7 p.m. I don't believe it is. It's at 7 p.m. Um, I can tell you that the website is coming along lovely. It is in about a week, we should have the front, like the front cover of what it's gonna look like um, that's coming. So as soon as we get that, obviously I'm gonna forward it to everybody. Um, but Becky has been meeting with them regularly, sending them the documentation she needs. She has been collecting photos, which have been amazing. I know some of you guys have probably seen them on Facebook. 
Um, and then if we, you know, once we get the front page, we can kind of, you know, I can bring her into the next, I'm not going to do it this week. Cause I don't think she'll, she, I'm not going to do it Wednesday cause she's not going to have enough information, but the next communication committee, I'm going to bring her in. Um, so hopefully we can maybe make it a different time so she can not have to get, um, so she can do it during normal time. But if we can't, then I'll just see if she can come in at night. Um, to give an overview of where she's at and what she's doing and all of that. So not this communications meeting, but the next one, we'll make sure that um, I invite her into it. So you guys can ask her direct questions as well. Um, anybody well, else have anything for communication? Yeah, to follow up what I was trying to finish where I was rudely interrupted, Tiffany, have you been getting uh, any uh, calls or communications regarding uh, you know, people that have, are having special problems as a result of COVID? Um, nothing that I wasn't able to handle in a matter of minutes on my own. So I had, I, I yes, I have had two or three calls um, and I've handled them. Nothing of which honestly took more than, took more than minutes. Um, yeah, we don't, we're not getting any emergency thing no. about people stranded in their homes or anything like no. that. Uh, I'm not even getting financial questions. I mean, at this point, it was more of a concern about somebody. Um, it's been resolved. And um, another one, just, you know, a friendly, hey, if you're going to the store, grab me this type thing. So no, I've not had anything that is of concern. Um, and we've posted it pretty much everywhere. I mean, I've put it in the newsletter with my phone number, with the email address. I've put it on the website. I've put it on the Facebook page. So really, we've not had an we've not had a anybody else reach out. Just very minimal, and they've all been handled. Well, that's a good thing. Yes, yes. And honestly, I think if it was anything of an emergency, they would be calling straight to the police department. So, um, and I'm not aware that there's really been an uptick in any of that either. We're, we're also well, that's that's what the resource guide I was talking about is. There's a thing called the blue book that have been around for decades, that has every resource you could imagine that's not just public, but private, especially Franklin County services, whether it's children, uh, elderly, adults, right. and health related. And so I'm gonna get my hands on a copy of that that you could have, Tiffany, so. That'd be great. And I, I think for the most part, I think a lot of the, the members of our community do reach out to Franklin County. I think we have a lot of resources that continually push Franklin County. We're in Franklin County. So I think a lot of people do reach out. I mean, it's everywhere. So anything yeah, the, from, for the, the most part, that's helpful most helpful Because it, it tabulates things that you, with quick reference and indexing, because it, Franklin County got dozens of agencies. No, nobody knows who they are or what they are on a lot of things. So right, yeah, they have they have so many different programs out there. I think that's that would be my guess. All right, anybody we're else also, for we're, communications? I was just going to say we're also a small enough, tightly knit enough community. I know myself and my neighbors two doors down. We just take turns mowing the lawn of the neighbor that's between us because. They're in their 90s and can't mow their lawn. And I think a lot of people are just taking care of each other. I completely agree. My next door neighbor cuts her next door neighbor's grass. I see her out there constantly. So I would agree. Yeah, there's a lot of that going on. Yep. All right. Safety committee, Brian. We had reports from both chiefs tonight. I had nothing additional to, to report. All right. You're a rock star tonight. Okay. I, Legislation, I Mark. to be. Okay, legislation. We did have a legislative committee meeting uh, recently. Um, it was amazing. We got done in under an hour, barely, but we did get it done in under an hour. Um, the biggest thing we are looking at now as far as new legislation is trying to get the sidewalk repair legislation or ordinance that we're going to end up adopting. Of course, we have not have to have one in the village until now because of not having sidewalks. Um, just an update for anyone who's listening and, and uh, or watching. Currently, what we're looking, leaning towards is a program where any repairs to the sidewalks are primarily the uh, homeowner's responsibility with a bit of a, if you really, really, really can't do it, the village will step in, do it for you, and bill you. Um, 
And that was the, the pretty much entirety of the legislative meeting we had. So I guess we can move on to reading legislation then, unless anyone wants to comment on that. No, but if I freeze, somebody take over for me. This is usually about the time I freeze. So okay. go for it. All right. Well, we will start with then 2020-11, the Planning and Zoning Council Liaison. Uh, this would be the third reading, so I will be calling for a vote on it. Um, this is the resolution that essentially sets, states that, of course, planning and zoning has a council liaison, and that council liaison can be chosen and removed by, I believe, just a majority vote of council. Yeah, um, that's the, the, the thing that it changed was to be able to remove the liaison with the majority yep. voting. And it's just a majority vote. Sorry, I did not print off the packet tonight, so I have to scroll through all of the safety report paperwork to get down to it. Um, this being the third reading, I now make a motion to uh, pass it. Second. All right. If someone wants to do the roll call for us. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Thank you. All Glad right. Councilman Carl. Yay. Council President Tripp. Diane. You're on mute. On mute. Aye. <laughs> Councilman Ben and Daddy. Aye. Councilman Wolf. Aye. Councilman Brueger. Aye. And Councilman McNamara. Aye. Okay, so that passed. Okay, our next one is resolution 2012 request mm -hmm. for estimated revenue on a four mil levy. Uh, this is a replacement levy. Um, I think first Someone remind me because I keep forgetting. Do Wait, we uh, reading we're intent to waive the three readings. Yeah, yeah. Waive the three readings first. Gotcha. With an attempt to waive the three readings. Um, this doesn't actually do anything just for uh, general information other than have us submit to Franklin County. We want to do a levy. Can you verify that this is how much money would give? This doesn't actually uh, do anything to pass the levy. It's, it's a, it's doesn't a increase your tax. <laughs> well, it does not. Well, and that'll be the, that doesn't do anything about that. This is just saying, and this is of course a replacement levy from when we actually discussed that. Um, okay, okay. So I move that we waive the three meeting three readings for this. Second. Tiffany. Oh, yeah. Councilman yeah. McNamara. Well, yeah. um, as it has become well known, I dislike waiving readings. However, due to the circumstances going on and that the people will get a vote anyway, that's what this is all about. I vote aye. Councilman Brueger? Aye. Councilman Curl? Yay. Councilman Benedetti? Aye. Councilman President Shrimp? Aye. Oh, sorry. Council President Shrimp? <laughs> aye. Still aye. <laughs> Perfect. Councilman Wolf? Still an aye. aye. <laughs> All right. Okay. So we have waived the uh, three readings. And I move that we pass this as an emergency so that we can move the ball along. And if council agree, put this levy on the ballot, it can be put on the November ballot. Second. All right. Councilman McNamara. Once again, I don't like emergencies, but the people are going to vote. So aye. Councilman Brueger. Aye. Councilman Curl. Aye. Councilman Benedetti. Aye. Council President Shrimp. Aye. And Councilman Wolf. You're on. Aye. Me. Yeah, I know. I was. I could have looked for the nod. I just didn't look fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that one is done and approved. So I will have them work on that tomorrow. Emergency. Okay. 
So now we have resolution 2020-13, the transfer of funds. Let me scroll down. I believe this is actually, this is the first reading of this. And this is actually transferring funds from last year's, I'm gonna bet. Oh no, this is a new one and important. Sorry, let me, uh, let, me, let me take a moment on this as I scroll down. Um, this is declaring the necessary to transfer funds by the village from the water maintenance fund to the sewer maintenance fund. Um, we have a plethora of money to repair water mains and such. We do not need to repair water mains. We need to repair sewers. So we are looking to... First reading. Transfer three, first it's first reading. reading. Okay. Transfer $350,000 from the water maintenance to the sewer maintenance to fund sewer maintenance project. And it's just the first reading, so that is all. Now I'm sorry, can, can I add something? Okay. Yes, please. Um, I think separate conversation, um, Street and Tiffany and I, we should have a conversation about the timing that's listed in this um, legislation, how quickly the tax commissioner can turn it around. I think they have 10 days to decide yes or no. Um, and then how quickly we can finish the project manual and what schedule of legislation you will want to do if you actually want to bid this project and have it finished in this calendar year. I think to get it done, you're, if, if you're intending to finish it in this calendar year, you're going to have to consider waiving readings and passing as an emergency to do the project. Does anybody have a August. problem doing that on the 18th? Are you, are you talking about in order to do the storm sewer projects on Wildwood? Yeah, sorry. If you want to do the Wildwood storm sewer project, it's gotcha. It, okay. it, it would be not the transferring, but um, on the back end during the bidding process. I can put together a short email message for you, Tiffany, and send it over to you so you can take a look at it. But I just wanted to give you a heads up. No, just so you know, I'm I'm glad you said it, not me, because it makes you look like the bad person. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, to me, by the time we get this done, yeah, you're July 8th, and then you're 10, you know, one, two weeks before you hear from that. So, yeah, you're not going to get this project done. No, there's not a chance in this world. Given that idea, I will just put in my two cents here. Um, and I would not, since we just found this out tonight, would not at all do this tonight. But if we're having, I believe we're having another meeting next yeah. Monday, um, I would want to do the transfer of money as an emergency in waiving readings, because that's not spending money, that's just putting it into a different account. And if we then don't use it or this or that, we haven't committed, we haven't, I'd rather rush moving the money than rush the decision to spend it, if that right. makes sense. Well, and a yeah. lot of times we can start the readings, if I'm not mistaken, once we put it out to bid and everything, we can do reading one, reading two without who actually has been awarded the final project. Yeah. I mean, I know we don't want to do too many readings like that, but we can start the readings early so people know exactly what we're working on. So we wouldn't be that far behind on those. Well, but yeah, is, Mike, is Mike talking about doing the emergency for the the televising for the flow line stuff. We're not even there yet, Tony. You're, we haven't even right. hit that one yet. No, this is We're just to transfer doing... the money. This is the project okay. they have all been working on. Okay, sorry. Yeah, yes, this is to do storm sewer work though. This is and, this is to right, get moving right. on. Yeah, this is to get us money so we can fun. move forward. <laughs> yeah, and, and as much as I joke that I, I would waive all readings and pass anything as a, an emergency because I'm an iron fisted dictator, um, when it actually comes down to it in real life, I, you know, something like transferring money, I'm okay with, but something like spending $30,000, $350,000, I think we need to slow down. I agree. Completely. Well, we Brian. don't have the luxury of being able to just print it and spend it, so I think yeah. it's a good idea. Brian, do you have anything? Do you Anyone have an issue with it? On that then? So yeah. I will have them fix the legislation unless I hear a huge difference. Um, we'll fix it tomorrow to... Um, put that on for the 18th to get that done. Awesome. 
Okay, so what are we down to now? 2014 storm sewer cleaning and video flow line first reading. Uh, excuse me. Yes. I don't believe we need to, uh, we're trying to push this through any quicker or not. No, I think we are. Are we? Because yeah. in my agenda, it wasn't listed that way. Well, I don't know. Let I'm me, not sure yet. Let me see if I can find the... We're going to do the same thing on that one is what we wanted yeah. to do. We wanted to have the first reading and then do it next week. So right. at least it's out there for a week. If anybody has any huge problem, it gives them a week to email us, scream, holler, throw fits. Okay. Um, so 2014. So tonight it's just a first reading with anyone who's watching this be warned we plan to hopefully pass it next monday so if you have issues get them in there soon it is a um, resolution allowing for the scoping and vacuuming of some of our sanitary sewers uh, the vacuuming storm. isn't necessarily storm. I'm sorry, storm sewer sorry <laughs> the vacuuming isn't necessarily designed to fix the problem, but the problem is bad enough. We have to suck everything out just to get a camera down there and see. Uh, the cost of the project shall not exceed $23,000. Um, although I believe the estimate that was mailed out to council today was about seventeen five dollars somewhere in there. Correct. Um, so it has a cushion. It looks about yeah, five, five and a half thousand dollars worth of cushion. Um, Anyone who wants to debate that, speak up. And the reason for the cushion, just really fast, I, I, you know, if they're standing down there with everything being done and he calls me and says it's going to be two more hours, I can't approve it. So that's the whole purpose of it. We have no intent of spending it unless think, we have to. I think we've done that a couple of times this year. And yes. if nothing else, I think the Gator showed us that, I mean, because that came in under what we originally thought, didn't it? Yes. Okay. That's because I'm good like that. Yes, yes. Don't laugh. Uh, there's all kinds of jokes I could have made there. I did it, so you're welcome. <laughs> okay, ordinance 06 2020, amending section 1202.01. This is our third reading. This is the ordinance that will expand the community, uh, sorry, planning and zoning committee, adding two additional non voting members. Um, for lots of reasons, get more ideas, get people involved, get more people ready to take over, et cetera, et cetera. Any discussion on that before I call for a vote? All right, I move approval of Ordinance 06-2020. Second. Second. Lots of seconds. Gotcha. Who, who got that? I, I'm I giving David it to David. McNamara, it. David McNamara seconded that. All right, awesome. Council President Trump. Aye. Councilman Brueger. Aye. Councilman Wolf. Aye. Councilman Curl. Aye. Councilman McNamara. Aye. Councilman Benedetti. Aye. And it passes. All right, and that is all for legislation. Awesome. Also, under an hour again. <clears throat> okay. Last but not least, um, anybody for new business? You guys better watch it because I'm gonna go fast through this. New business? Right, yes, I, I, I got an item for new business. Yeah, you go. go for it. Go, Joe. Okay, uh, I don't know if this touches on storm sewers or lakes or community, whatever, but uh, I know Mike has already done the work, but I, I'd like to see if it isn't possible to get a, a clear answer as to whether or not the storm sewer that travels through the property here, the one, the open part, has enough capacity to carry the water that's going to come through when they finish all these projects. Because uh, I may have the retaining wall put back up because it's caved in and there's a lot of erosion going on, things like that. So if I do that, I'd have a choice as to whether to, you know, have to excavate some stuff to make it larger so that would i know mike knows the answer to that so that's a question really and then uh, that's pretty much it other new businesses I'm, i'll apologize to the group for my outburst there just wait <laughs> i i don't know if mike's still there but i uh 
I believe. Well, I, I, I know Tiffany talks to him a whole bunch. So that was just a well, question. I can, same thing. I can have him email. Um, I can have him email that, but it was my understanding. I mean, that's going to my be understanding is yes. That's going to that be was, part of the engineering well, when they do the East Shore project. That's yeah, not, to not belabor the point, but what's happened, the, the, the retaining wall is caved in, so it's blocking further. Oh, the other issue was there's lots of tree roots in there. And I don't know if it's a minor thing if we could have whoever our tree person is look and see if these tree roots were removed, if it's going to kill all the trees or not harm them. That would be helpful. I can, this is my thought, I'll, I'll give a, I'll, I'll keep it. Good thing for everybody. We've sized, we've sized the sewer that's running north to south behind the East Shore Court property. Um, part of task order 17 when authorized will be to confirm the pipe size needed to come from the Park Lane Drive area into the head of the North Lake. Uh, for the channel itself going into the North Lake, we've never been authorized to look at that. So the answer is no. We don't have any sizing or any information on that channel size. Well, the issue is, I thought is that you know I might simply have the retaining wall put back up, so it's you know it's not an issue. But there's enough erosions going on. There's a you could <laughs> I could excavate more when I put the wall back up make it bigger but i'd rather not but that was the, just a, the question whether sufficient size the way it was uh, i mean that 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 just goes to a, a conversation that's been ongoing for four or five years now that i mean it's a the holistic the holistic problem and, and to do that is a is a pretty significant study to study that whole the whole thing and uh, we've never been authorized to look at that, so I don't. Well, well let me rephrase answer. the question, if I may. Then, then the other question would be: Is there going? Uh, uh, I know, you know, there's not going to be more water coming through the storm sewers, no matter what. But is it, it, when these uh, blockages and repairs are done, whenever that occurs, is, there, is the water going to be coming through here a lot faster? Because maybe I could ask it that way. No. Uh, it'll, it'll, you'll get the same amount of water in the same general amount of time. That is, Joe? Well, it's an important question. Thanks, Mike. Yep. Tony, did you have a question for new business? For new business? Well, I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah I'm at new yeah. business. New business. Well, you got I 10 seconds. Is. I know you guys are going to cringe when you hear this, but I uh, started reading the, the Ohio Revised Code with regards to uh, qualifications, you know, request for qualifications of the engineers. And, you know, it appears to me that we, you know, we need to go through the process of, of uh, ranking the people that turned in their requests, you know, their qualifications. Uh, and go through that process again. And I guess my question is, is who is it that, I know the first time, Diane, that I believe it was the, the facilities committee that ranked the, the uh, people that turned in their qualifications. Uh, my question is, who is it gonna be that ranks the, the people that have turned in their qualifications? All of you. What's that? All of you. All of council, you're going to go through and you're going to rank one through. You're going to rank all four of the ones that we currently have. Every all of council is going to do it. Well, who's who's doing that? I mean, is that something that fell on your table to get that together and figure out what <laughs> meeting we're going to talk about that? No, at this point, I don't think any. I know we've just kind of gone back and forth, back and forth. So I think the last, Eric, if you want to chime in on that, but yeah, sure. it's my understanding that council is going to be the one to rank them. So. So a month or so back when I sent the original guidance document that Gene provided and it had a, uh, it had a ranking sheet, an example ranking sheet. Um, I asked for, you know, obviously we got into COVID. So that was a, you know, an honest distraction, all things considered. But what I need is for everybody again to look at that. If you have suggestions for how we're going to rank, 
please send them to me and I will incorporate them into the draft document. And that way, prior to everyone, you know, going through and ranking people, we want to have a um, uniform way of doing it, the rating system and everything. And so that way it will include some interview um, items as well. Once we can get to interview. So if you have any suggestions, please do it. I was just talking to the mayor today and um, you know, we were going to compose a kind of a default document, but again, if anyone's got any suggestions, any questions to add, delete, please send them in and we'll go through it all as a group. If we need to, we'll have a special meeting to come to some agreement. So was this in, was that included in the email that had the, the four people or three or four uh, companies? Uh, well, actually, yes, uh, there was one that was there. I can, again, I can resend the whole thing. I, I sent it out a couple times, but I will send it again. Well, I'll look at that. I mean, I, I remember seeing the part, you know, the, the people that turned in their qualifications. I don't remember seeing the rating process. Yes, it, it, it's specifically is a guidance document that dealt with making these uh, decisions uh, for hiring professionals for um, public entities. And a part of that, uh, back toward the end of it, there is a there is a sample rating sheet to give you some ideas about how it should be crafted. So please again, review if anyone needs it. I, I, I tell you what, I'll just send it to everyone again. So everyone has- Yeah, because same... I'll tell you that my phone only goes back to the 11th of April and you actually send it out on the 10th of April. I can pull it up another way, but some people's it may or may not pull up with our emails, just no so worries. you know. I will resend it. Yeah, because it was said that we had to, you know, start over, start this process over again, if these four aren't up to our, you know, don't meet the qualifications. And that's not what I'm finding when I read the, read the, uh, the, the code, it just says that you have to, you know, literally, you know, rank them, interview them, negotiate with the three. And then if those don't work out, then you just start reaching out to other people. You have to you have to go through the process again and get other people to submit. That's just the way it is. That's not the way it re I'm not going to get I'll into this now. Yeah. But I, well, I get what I'm getting at is it would be nice, you know, if you guys are running out of things to do, my fellow council members, if if you looked at Ohio Revised Code, I think it's one fifty three point six five, and it's on that. It's it lists that out in the the document that Gene sent out uh, Saturday morning. Uh, so is there like a, a, a thing or a website, I'm guessing, I, I, I guess I could just Google this, where I can read like the Ohio Revised Code? Yeah, like you, this, you I, just I'm Google Tony, Ohio you, Revised Code and you can Google Google Ohio Revised Code 153.65 and it'll come right up. I yeah, just mean in general, because I mean, you know, you, you frequently reference the Ohio Revised Code and you mentioned more than once about, you know, we all, you know, swore to uphold the laws of the state of Ohio and I'm a hundred percent in agreement. Um, I just like to find a good source. I'm assuming that'd be a fair place to start just to look at the. Yeah. If you just Google Ohio Revised Code, it's up there in a codified format. You can click through and it's, it's real easy. I mean, unread. if you just internet search in general, I don't know that we have to support Google. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, well, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was not an endorsement of the village of Minerva Park. Oh. Okay. Well, okay, thing, old business. I told, oh, are you not done? Well, I just wanted to uh, tell David if he had found the our ordinances are on our website. You know, the code book is, uh, if you go to the website, it says codified ordinances, a picture. And you click on that and you can go to whatever, spend hours. There's hours of fun to be had there. Well, I'm off the next few days, so I'll have a peek at it. You're also, you know, uh, right now the community building's closed, but just for future, when we do start opening it back up for everybody to come in, we actually have the books. Um, we finally gotten the books in there. You're more than welcome to come in and spend hours flipping through it. And that is the Ohio Revised Code. Okay. No, that's our codes. Okay. Well, I will... Yeah, I look forward to that because I mean that that's something that I haven't wanting to get better at, obviously, to fulfill this. Well, I just finished reading, David. I just finished reading twenty six pages of all the waterway stuff. So <laughs> if you want to have questions, don't read it that they ask me. Okay. <laughs> all right. Any more new business? All right, old business. I didn't give you any time on that one, did I? <laughs> old business. <laughs> Oh, I don't hear any. So it sounds like it's time for adjourning. Uh, real quick, adjourn. I, will, I will point out before Councilman Wolf moves to adjourn, I just figured out that if you hold down the space bar, it takes you off mute until you release it. And that's a pretty cool feature.
Oh, now that's cool. Good to know. We're sharing that. Nice. All right. Our cell phones too. That yeah. I don't know. Uh, All right, Brian. Don't have a space bar, Kyle. Move to adjourn. Second. Um. I, um. <laughs> do we, is there anybody that doesn't want to adjourn at this point? Too bad. This is my social life. I love hanging out with you guys. Oh yeah, no. All right. We're we're adjourning. Bye, guys. No, no. Bye. Bye. Hey, hey, Eric, are you still on the call? Uh, yeah, you can give me a call.